I will appoint you over shepherds after my own heart, says the Lord, who will shepherd you wisely and prudently. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, if you heard a little of Jesuit music at the beginning of this Mass, it was done on purpose. Today is one of the major feasts of the Society of Jesus. We celebrate today St. Peter Canisius, a confessor and doctor of the Church. He was one of the original companions of St. Ignatius that founded the Society of Jesus and played a very important role in the history of the Church, in Germany especially. And so today we, uh, offer, we celebrate the Mass in honor of St. Peter Canisius. And also I'd like to put in uh, my personal intention for my dad who turns 91 on this feast day. And so my brothers and sisters, in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us recall our sins. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who for the defense of Catholic faith made the priest St. Peter Canisius strong in virtue and in learning, grant through his intercession that those who seek the truth may joyfully find you, their God, and that your faithful people may persevere in confessing you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word, be persistent whether it is convenient or inconvenient, convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires and insatiable curiosity, will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myths. But you be self-possessed in all circumstances, put up with hardship, perform the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry, and he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me, burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll is it, it is prescribed for me, to do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you, O oh Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Your justice I kept not hid within my heart. Your faithfulness and your salvation I have spoken of. I have made no secret of your kindness and your truth in the vast assembly. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Alleluia, alleluia. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
And Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under the bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law, until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. This Gospel may sound familiar because we've heard this phrase so many times. And to be the salt, be worth your salt. You are the salt of the earth. And we have a great example in St. Peter Canisius of what it means to be the salt of the earth, especially in a very important time in the history of the church in the 1500s. St. Peter Canisius was born in what's today the Netherlands, in Nijmegen. However, he was most known for his work in Germany, so much that he was given some, the title of the second apostle of Germany. And it wasn't for nothing that he got his title just at a time when the church, especially north of the Alps, in the area that it's today Germany, started to question many things. We're talking about the Protestant Reformation, questioning what was the mass, what was the priesthood, what were the things that we actually believed in? Well, St. Peter Canisius was one of those who came back with an answer, and he gave a very good answer. Because the answers he gave to these questions and the input he gave to those debates are still studied. And they still form the answer of the church to many of the questions and objections that the reformers had placed. The Council of Trent was that one of those very important, perhaps one of the most important councils in the history of the church because it gives the definitive answer to a lot of these objections. And St. Peter Canisius was one of the major contributors to that council. And so just like you don't hide the light and you don't put what's best away so nobody sees it, when the call came to help for the Council of Trent, St. Ignatius of Loyola put out his best. He sent two Jesuits, Laines and Canisius. And Canisius we celebrate today because he took that mission to teach very seriously. He put that mission to teach in many ways, not only academically and in the council, in the ways that we can still study today, but even in ways that we probably don't know because, well, they don't quite affect us. He's also known as the doctor of the church, and the doctor of the church is one who contributes something to the life of the church for good. Well, one of these things, unless you speak German, well, it won't be so obvious, because he created also a catechism in the German language, one of the early catechisms, and he made it in a very special way. He created, well, a catechism that was essentially a song. The entire catechism rhymed. And he did it on purpose so that children could learn it rather quickly. And so that early German catechism was authored by St. Peter Canisius, and it was done in the form of small songs, children's songs, that are still known today. And that was one of the great contributions he did because he took to heart one of the vows that the Jesuits do. It's one of the secret vows. It's not a secret because no one's, no one's supposed to know about it. No, it's just, well, it's not done in public. But one of the additional vows when a Jesuit receives his final vows, he makes some additional promises, not in front of everybody, but personally to the superior. And one of them is to teach children the catechism, and when possible, favor to teach young people 
the catechism of the church. And Peter Canisius took that at heart. His catechism still exists today, and it's a wonderful resource, and it's very brilliantly done. And so on this day that we also remember that salt of the earth, we have that great example of St. Peter Canisius, who was very popular in Eastern Europe and what is the German lands today. In fact, if you go around there, you'll probably see more statues of him than St. Ignatius. And when they think about the Jesuits, they think about him, actually, not so much St. Ignatius. And so let us pray for the church and all those in these lands, in the German-speaking lands, because today is also a feast day for them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us present our prayers and intentions on this day. Let's pray for the Society of Jesus throughout the world as we celebrate this feast of St. Peter Canisius, that it may be reinvigorated to be salt of the earth and respond to the challenges of our time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the intentions of the Belen community present with us now and those who cannot be present for the health and well-being of their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your own, your own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, receive the prayers that we place at the foot of this altar. Be propitious with us as you were St. Ignatius of Loyola. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the divine and the work of human hands, it will become for us the, our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. Receive the gifts, O Lord, that we offer you in memory of St. Peter, and open our lips that we may confess and praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the least society of your Son, Jesus, you have raised up many holy and blessed companions, that your glory might shine more brightly, and that we too, encouraged by their prayers and example, may take up our cross and may more eagerly spend ourselves and be spent for the salvation of the human race in union with Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. 
May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance which you elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Peter Canisius, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Toward the part of brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead, lead us not into, into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father, and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death gave life to the world. For your grace, you must help me by the word from all my sins. Amen. 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 Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini, O Jesu Christi, Cusanium, Amen. Sanguis Domini nostri Jesu Christi, cos anima mea, vita eterna. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of spiritual community and falls to sleep worry. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I will most gladly spend and be utterly spent myself for your sake. Alleluia. Let us pray. God of our fathers, who through St. Peter Canisius spoke to your scattered flock, grant that those who have believed in your Son and have been nourished at his sacred banquet may be worthy to remain true to his teaching and to be united in the breaking of the bread. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.